What up, dude? What are we doing today? We are going to install a new head unit into the Porsche. And it's locked, of course. So the Cayman's getting a new head unit. I'm going to organize everything we have over on the table, which is over there. And then we're going to come in and see what we're using because I searched long and hard to try to get all the details and I only found one good written article on Planet Nine forums for the Porsche Cayman. But I'm going to show you everything I purchased. Where I got it will be down in the description. And how to do it. Changing the head unit, going to Android Auto head unit, and adding a backup camera and making it all work with the OEM Bose system on the Cayman S. All right, so we're back at the table. And we're going to go over everything we've acquired for the Cayman S. And this is what we're going to do. So, everything on here, except for the MOST box, was ordered off Amazon. So you can find most of this stuff on Amazon. Okay, we have our Kenwood Double Din. Uh, what the heck model is that? DMX 706S. About 400 bucks. Uh, full touch screen. Android Auto and uh, uh, whatever the Apple version is, uh, Auto Player, whatever, or Google, yeah, Apple Auto uh, compatible. Um, really nice with, uh, and it's compatible with a USB cable, and we have a solution for that. Uh, this is our American International, okay, uh, mount kit. This is the dash mount kit. Let me grab that part number. <laughs> We picked up a rear view camera. This goes and mounts behind with the license plate in front. So you'll see how it mounts up. And it looks OEM like it's just right above the license plate. These are your harnesses for it. Simple. We have our wiring um, harness kit. I'm sorry, this is actually not the wiring harness kit. This is the USB cable adapter that's going to go from the back of the Kenwood to the OEM location for the cigarette lighter, okay, and allow us to plug our uh, Android Auto and power cord right onto that. And this is the wiring harness for the stereo. You're not going to use all the pins off of it, but it just adapts from the Kenwood over to a couple of simple wires that you do need. The Cayman S with the Bose system uses a fiber optic uh, type of wiring harness so the MOST box which is this is going to simplify and allow us to use our OEM Bose amplifier and speakers and make everything compatible this is made by uh, Avin and I'll put a link in the description because this was the hardest thing to find to see what works correctly there they ship out of California I got this in three days uh, it costs about a hundred bucks the wiring harness is about ten dollars the adapter antenna from uh, the wiring harness and the adapter antenna are from uh, Meta I'm sorry and Meta is a company that makes a lot of uh, automotive wiring electronics and there's the harness right there okay this is just a fuse link a lot of fuse tap, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to have to tap in <clears throat> to our 12-volt uh, uh, power. So we're going to go right out of the fuse box on that. And this is my USB cable, which is not only just a charge cable, but it's also a data cable. So this is all we did, all we got. Total all in, about $600. And it's going to update because the 2009 Cayman S does have Bluetooth, but only phone function, not multimedia. Forgot to share one last thing. I just moved some of the stuff on the table because now I need it in the car. But these guys, they're wiretaps. They work amazing. They're better than the press ones. You screw on, put the wire down here that you're tapping into, screw the base onto that. It has a little point that gets in there. And then you feed the wire you want to extend into this top part and screw it down. This is a I got these on Amazon, so you can see what they look like. It comes with a 
two blue, two yellow, two red. You, using a couple of them, obviously. Instructions. This is one last tool. It's a coat hanger, stretched out, modified, to get the wire tucked away and pulled through certain areas. Simple, amazing, inexpensive, because it's probably a free tool. Alright, so what I decided to do is to start with the rear view camera, the backup camera. So as you can see, the backup camera goes on to the area where your license plate would be. So the license plate would go right under the camera and block off the black bracket. It's an aluminum bracket. I went ahead and punched a little hole right here and then drilled it through the bracket oops, sorry, through the bracket and through the bumper to put the wire for the camera through here guided a hanger so you see here we took the tail light out it's three bolts and a cover super easy we guided that guy a hanger through here a wire hanger straightened out straight shot through where this wire goes taped it onto the end guided it through and connected this end to that end these two ends connect on the harness for the camera I'm gonna slip this heat wrap over here shrink it down just to give it additional protection and then tape it a little snug just so these two ends don't separate and then I'm gonna find a spot to tie this through because right here is where the tail light goes so we're going to get it through there with the tail light on and make sure it's secure and isn't pinching any wires all right made some progress we ran our rear view camera cable under the trim so we lifted the trim tucked everything under under the sill remove this door sill all the way up through here fed it through the inside of the dash it's sitting right there the little see the rca on that side we'll leave it there for now we had to take these panels off these are the leather panels that sit there okay we had to take these guys off it uses one the little carpet guy right here that uses a t30 one bolt you can see the bolt right there it pulls off so let's get in there so the bolts right there it pull it uh, one side you just pop it off and then over here is the leather piece and we'll show it on the other side it uses a pair of t25 bolts okay or sorry t25 bolts yeah head bolts so you can use your, your t style bolts that you use on porsches and random german cars so let's go back over here adjust the light real quick as you can see this leather piece here okay held on by a pair of t25s okay and the plastic piece that goes here is held on by a t30 very easy to disassemble you're gonna pull this out and like this and put it off to the side okay then we're gonna get an allen key for here and here and turn that. I'm not going to go into too much details. A lot of videos on how to remove the head unit. It's actually quite simple. You rotate the Allen head keys, one here, one here, and one there, and one there on the other side, and the head unit will pop off. And then we'll look at the plugs. I put some towels on the seats. They're leather. We're getting dirty. It's a hot Texas day. I apologize for the sweaty forearms. Cover the shift knob because we don't want to scratch it. So we made a lot of progress. Take your time. It's not difficult. Honestly, it's so far it's been just patience and kind of meditation. All right. Just the camera. There we are. It's off. So we got all these plugs. We got those plugs. We're going to take them all out. Uh, semi pro tip because we're not professionals just kind of logic uh, take your cell phone because we all have a smartphone and take a snapshot on where everything goes you may not need to go back to it but yeah before you start disconnecting stuff and I should have said this at the beginning please disconnect your battery 
dealing with a lot of electrical stuff we don't want to shock yourself blow out a main fuse anything like that so disconnect your battery then start should have done that at the beginning i apologize the two allen key head bolts that we took off or the four right here okay right here these you're going to turn these counterclockwise you're going to turn the ones on the driver's side counterclockwise and then you're going to gently pull this radio out. It fits right in there. Super, super simple. Okay, be gentle with these. They're some of our fiber optic cords. And uh, we're just going to disconnect it. I'm going to put my head unit aside. I'm just going to set it aside in a nice place. So if in the future we need to put it back to OEM, we can. All right, tube. Wires are all ran. i got to clean up some of the uh, zip ties over there. This looks like a mess right here because I was just testing everything. Before you put everything back in, make sure everything does work. It does work. It does turn on. I'm not going to turn it on because, well, copyright stuff, etc. But the most important stuff on a Porsche, now this will apply to any Porsche uh, from the Cayman to the Boxster 987.2 and the 911-997 model with the Bose uh, amplifier and sound system from Porsche. Okay, this is the MOST or the Most box, the Most box. Okay, uh, from uh, 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 Avon. Okay, these two orange wires are your fiber optic cables that come out of the OEM harness. Then screwdriver pops out, plugs into the back. This is the plug for your uh, MOST box. Okay, your yellow wire goes to the yellow wire on the metric uh, metris uh, harness, the stereo harness. Your black is a ground, same thing, it goes to the stereo harness. The red goes to your ACC power. Okay, so the red goes to your ACC power that you that in our case we ran from the fuse box with a fuse jump okay uh we used fuse b9 b as in boy 9 okay and went to that particular wire uh, out of that out of the fuse box at the 7.5 amp and then ran it here so that is not difficult and the beauty about this is you don't need to run any more stereo cables so basically your, your your grays your purples your whites those standard cables are all right here I put uh, some heat shrink around them because we didn't use them at all let's uh, come over here alright this is gonna be our our ACC cable our constant that we got sorry about the uh, the focus there um, this and sorry about the fans it's hot today you got a fan running in the background uh, and so this is going to power into the harness, uh, the, your ACC power, both off the MOST and off of the uh, met, uh, your, your uh, stereo harness for everything else. So you're only going to use the ACC wire, you're going to use the yellow wire, and you're going to use the black wire. Now... You do need to have the amp on wire, which is a blue and white wire on the Metro harness. Okay, that's going to wire into the solid white wire on the main harness, the big harness on the Porsche. What I did, because we weren't using any of the speaker wires, is I relocated that purple wire into pin, and I believe it's pin 14. So that way I didn't have to route a wire from here to there, and then that purple wire goes into the... Uh, you can't see it too well, but it's right here into the light blue wire. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, the blue and white wire right here where my thumbs are, my thumb and my in the, in the middle finger right here uh, that powers your antenna. Okay? Really simple. The hardest part was routing everything, getting everything through the holes so nothing shows. Everything's hidden the way it should be. I'm going to clean this up right here. All right, uh, we're gonna zip tie it, tie it up, tape it up. Uh, right here, this is good. this is our microphone for our Bluetooth. Unfortunately, I was unable to find out how to wire in the Bluetooth.
from the factory speakers on the uh, steering column. If I ever do, I will go back in and redo the wiring uh, to the factory speakers. But for now, it sits right here. It's in a good spot, pointing right to the steering wheel. And uh, yeah, so basically, you got to tuck everything in, put it back together, all right, and then we'll turn stuff on, and uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like with the uh, uh, aftermarket surround and all that. So the main thing, this little box for your Bose system, that's your fiber optic. This is your your powering stuff. You know your your ACC power, your uh, which is ignition, your constant, and your ground. Not difficult. The AV wires go back here. Okay, this is your AV wires right there. That I can't. There we go. Come on, camera. That's your AV wires right there. Okay, I got it set up for the front. Unfortunately, it does not do front and rear. It'll run all four speakers constant. That's just unfortunately how it is. But that's the best way to adapt it. I think there's fancier units out there, but this one's a hundred bucks. A lot of the other ones are three hundred or up. So all in all, this is, I believe, a great budget way to get an aftermarket system. We still haven't tested the Bluetooth or the Apple CarPlay. i got to run the cable to over here, but we'll come back. All right, that's what the camera looks like. The little bracket sits behind this uh, license plate, and then bolts onto this license plate location. Sits right in the middle. We ran it up. Behind the tail light, wired the trigger to the tail light wire, went in through the paneling, along the paneling, down the door seal, across the sill, into the dash, behind the dash, and into the head unit. As you can see, the install's all done. Sorry for the glare back there from the sunlight. But as you can see, the install kit fits very, very good inside the stock panels. Aligns very well towards the bottom here. And you can put your own background on it. We put that one together on the computer. We're going to turn this on real quick. Well, just in the on position. Turn the fan off here. Everything works as it should. And there's your reverse camera. The dotted lines are OEM to the camera itself. So you can see, you can take that off by cutting the little wire that's on the harness, that's a loop wire on the camera. I just left it on, I'm not taking it all apart just to cut the wire. Um, the solid lines are adjustable and they're on the actual head unit on the Kenwood. So. Yeah, uh, we just found a parking spot and lined it up to that so that we know that we're as wide and as even on our camera. You can adjust the height a little bit by just kind of slightly by hand bending the bracket. But it's real smooth, super clear picture. There's a little glare because of the sun behind us. But other than that, I mean, you can see how clear it is. It looks great at night as well. I trust it uh, at night already. See, you can even see the van that went by. We're not sponsored. We like and we share what works well for us. Thank you very much. Hit the subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Like us. Comment. Have a great week. And God bless.